Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back again to bring you the 8.1 Disc Priest Guide. Everything you need to know for the battle for Dazar Allure and all of it in a quick and easy to consume format. All right, starting off, Disc is sort of that quintessential damage to healer, a more aggressive healer that you're going to be able to bring to the raid group. It provides a substantial amount of burst healing and prioritizes ramping up into atonements for specific damage windows. The usual process is you'll be applying atonement uh, via Shadow Mend or Powered Shield or even Powered Radiance, getting those atonements out, extending the duration of them, and preparing a large amount of damage after the duration is extended to be able to put out a very large burst of healing onto the group as mechanics are going out and hitting the raid group. It brings a great deal of utility with power barrier. The extra damage it provides is very substantial, even after multiple nerfs to the spec throughout this expansion. And it looks to be a powerhouse to bring into your heroic or mythic groups in Dazara lore and beyond. Getting into the talents, usual builds that you will be running with. Now in raids, you'll often be using Schism, often if not always. The damage and the burst that it provides has an extremely low mana cost and the extra damage that you can add on with that 40% increased damage, which is only to your abilities, not to your pets like Mindbender or Shadow Fiend, but just to your damage, is very substantial and helpful for bursting out a lot of healing at once. Twist of Fate is an excellent choice in Mythic Plus, as is Schism. They both are very competitive in Mythic Plus. Depending on if you need a bit more support and want to play a little bit more defensively, Twist of Fate will be your play, maximizing your damage, or if there's more group-wide, burst-wide damage under the group, then you opt to take Schism instead. Feather is, of course, just the strongest mobility available to you, and it just is going to be the go-to pick. Check in the description below or in my guides for a quick macro to be able to cast it on yourself without having to actually place it down. On the 45 tier, Solace remains as the better mana and damage option uh, compared to its counterparts. It also synergizes very well with Schism to be able to have that extra bonus damage added on and is a great mobile ability to be used on cooldown, continuing to regen as much mana as you can for both raids and mythic plus. On the 60 tier, is more CC uh, oriented. All three have if uses, if not more niche uses available to you. Shining Force is usually the default pick to go with in raids in case you need to knock something back and gain a little space. Psychic Voice and Shining Force are frequently used in Mythic Plus. Psychic Voice offers a very great AoE uh, interrupt of sorts with using fear to fear up to five targets if they're all casters. Be really strong for abilities that cannot be interrupted example right dominant mind is a little bit more niche uh, but has some uses here and there on the 75 tier sins of the many is going to be your go-to for mythic plus while sins and shadow covenant are both competitive for the rating environment sins uh, adds quite a bit of extra damage to you, to your rotation to your frequently used abilities and can be a very substantial damage increase especially on early progression on a fight like fetid or like you'll see in the future in Dazar lore with grong Adding extra damage to be able to kill and add more rapidly is a massive boom to the raid group and should be taken whenever such extra kind of damage occurs. In other fights that are specifically going to be a DPS race or a DPS race or die, for example, what we saw at a Gahoon where you needed as much damage as possible to be able to kill it before the fight you basically ran out of time, it can be excellent to use there as well. Shadow Covenant is a very high HPS ability and is often taken a mythic plus to play a little bit more safely. Uh, although more infrequent than taking sins from Mythic Plus, but Shadow Covenant and Raids has really grown in usage, mainly because it offers very high HPS on a very short cooldown, and even with the negative side effects, the net healing effect is still quite powerful. Often the negative side effect, that extra absorb uh, heal that you have to heal through in order to further heal the target, is fairly minor, often gets eat, uh, eaten up by a lot of passive healing, say from like ground effects like efflorescence, uh, healing rain, things like that, uh, or even if you have to actually heal through it, is not too significant to cause many issues for you. On the 90 tier, Purge the Wicked is often the pick for Mythic Plus, while Halo is going to be your default for raiding. Right? Purge the Wicked is extremely powerful for Mythic Plus because you're more easily able to spread and maintain your dots through the Penance Cleave effect, where you'll be able to spread it to one other target by penancing a target that already has Purge on it. Halo is just very high HPS, and the first hit of onto an enemy will trigger atonement. We've seen Purge the Wicked taken now and again, 
for raiding whenever there was an occurrence of a CC'd or crowd controlled mob that you didn't want Halo to hit or was at risk of hitting, so you would take Purge the Wicked instead, but usually Halo will be your default pick. On the 100 tier, Lenience is your go-to for Mythic Plus, uh, where, with Evangelism being your go-to for raiding. Uh, Evangelism's ability to extend the duration of all active atonements is an immense boon and is one of the big reasons we're able to have such a strong burst build at our disposal. Being able to set up a large amount of atonements, be able to extend the duration of them afterwards is very powerful and helpful for the group. Luminous Barrier is more of a trap talent because it replaces strong utility in the Power Word Barrier with the Luminous Effect which puts Absorbs out onto the entire group. While it does turn a, otherwise, a damage reduction cooldown into a healing cooldown, it does not mean it's actually going to provide better value for your group. Damage reduction that you get out of Powered Barrier, while it does not appear on healing meters, is still substantial utility and it often is actually stronger value than taking Luminous Barrier. So by specking into Luminous Barrier, you're losing out on the opportunity cost of evang taking Evangelism and you're having to replace Barrier as alongside it. So evangelism will be your play and perfecting play and improving your play with evangelism will only continue to make yourself stronger with the spec itself. With that being said, in order to prioritize and what you should be prioritizing with your gear is often going to be item level in the intellect based slots like gloves, legs, shoulder, or sorry, gloves, legs, cloak, etc. Your Azerite pieces, for example, will vary depending on the traits, and if you'd like to see a more comprehensive list of what Azerite traits are good and which ones you're going to be focusing on for the sake of brevity, check it in the description below with my Wowhead written guide. And those will be make sure to keep up to date with any changes for Dazara lore or future raids. Now, in terms of gear, things like gloves, belt, legs, etc., often having eye level will be superior for you. In terms of substantial item level upgrades. Usually you're going to be going after the substantial item level upgrades. With rings, you'll have a little bit more option, a little bit more choice. Going after Mythic Plus is an easy way to be able to increase your haste and be able to actually help you uh, gain those stats that, that will be very helpful during progression. The ideal is to prioritize haste with crit and mastery being very close together and then versatility following. All your stats after haste are beneficial to you, so do not feel horrible about taking a high item level glove piece with mastery or versatility or something like that. With your priority being on eye level, the extra intellect that you gain as a result will offer a more substantial increase than a much lower item level piece with the perfect secondary stats. Now as we're talking on to gameplay, the big thing to think about is with discipline going into every fight is how you're setting yourself up and how you're preparing yourself. Before you go into an encounter, it's very important to look through whichever boss mods or weak wars that you're going to be using and making sure that you're able to prioritize and emphasize when those big mechanics are happening. So studying in advance for a very preemptive healer spec is immensely important. So going into bigwigs or DBM, looking at the specific boss mechanics, the boss timers from your dungeon journal, looking at those AOE raid-wide effects if you're able to catch a stream, uh, if you're able to catch a YouTube video or anything like that, start looking at those events and the damage that goes out into the group, and then being able to emphasize those on the meters. Because you want to be able to take as much time as you can to prepare your atonements in advance before extending the duration of them to be able to put together the best healing possible. When in a raid, it's very important to remember your mindset going into different encounters is to focus on the big damage events that you'll be able to align your evangelism with. Knowing that you'll be able to focus on the specific mechanics, watch the timers through your boss mods, and being able to prioritize those timers over others to know when you need to start ramping up and to start putting out atonements to be able to extend them and then start dealing damage. Frequent term known as ramp up is going to refer to applying as many atonements as possible in a specific window, extend the duration of them through the evangelism talent, and then start dealing damage to be able to put out a large burst of healing. This is gonna start with making sure you're maintaining Shatter Pain on the boss as often as you possibly can. And then when you start applying atonements, all of the atonements you're applying are being healed by that dot damage that you're maintaining. It offers a huge amount of HPS through atonement and is very, very consistent healing that you're able to provide to the group. And whenever you're gonna go into your ramp up, you're gonna be applying about five to seven uh, powered shields or shadow mens depending on if the target is actually injured or not. And <clears throat> your primary targets for those are gonna be targets that are, you know, for example, tanks or people who are 
having any specific debuffs, who will constantly be taking damage as you're ramping up. Those are the targets that you're specifically selecting to apply Atomon onto first. Afterwards, you'll be casting Power of Radiance twice. You cast that first charge, and then you'll use your Shadow Fiend after the first charge, and then you'll follow up with your second charge of Power of Radiance. After that point, you'll hit Evangelism to extend the duration of all of your active Atonements. So you'll now have Shattered Pain, which you'll need to refresh. You'll have Shadow Fiend currently dealing damage into the target, and then you'll be able to enter your damage priority. Using Schism, to be able to line up with that hit. And it's important because Schism deals a substantial amount of damage on its own and all damage after it when the debuff is applied is increased. It's important to focus on the timing of this to make sure that you're going to be able to line it up perfectly with the damage going out. It's better to have a weaker evangelism, a weaker ramp up with less atonements extended to be able to have a stronger timing in most cases. That way you will be able to actually hit the time perfectly and quickly reverse the damage onto the group and keep players out of any kind of dangerous health levels as quickly as possible. From there, your damage priority is going to go into Solace or Halo, depending on if you have it off cooldown or you're talented into it. Pennants often will be used uh, offensively if you're moving, uh, especially if you have the power of the dark side proc or you'll be able to follow up with smites afterwards. It's important to continue following up with smites afterwards until all your atonements or just about all your atonements are falling off because there's a substantial amount of just smaller healing that you're able to pick up continuing to smite, continuing to deal that damage on the boss. A lot of people will look at just their schism window and once that ends, they immediately just stop de dealing any sort of damage, right? And they lose out on a lot of healing and a lot of effectiveness in the process. After your ramp up is successful after you're having that kind of big ramp up. People often have a lot of questions about how many atonements am I supposed to maintain? How many atonements? What's the minimum requirement I'm supposed to have? There often isn't any. There's not a minimum level that you need to be able to apply at any one point in time, but you will follow the more general priority of if a target's injured, you're going to be able to main atone, maintain atonement on them. Usually it'll follow up with maintaining, you know, one to three atonements depending on the damage that's going out, depending on who's taking hits after your ramp up is over, right? So you're letting all of your atonements, your 15 or so atonements fall off, and then you're gonna reapply, for example, to the tanks or anybody who's debuffed and continue using Smite and Solace as rapidly as you possibly can. Making sure, of course, you're maintaining Shadow or Pain and so on. From there, you're looking at using, for example, a more of a mini ramp, something that's going to be not as powerful as your evangelism ramp up, but if there's another burst of damage coming, you'll be able to more easily prepare for it. On Conclave of the Chosen, for example, in Dazara Lore, there's frequently the Paku uh, Guardian who will be summoning Paku to deal large damage onto the group. You will not always, for example, have evangelism to line up with that. So being able to switch in Rapture for one moment is also extremely helpful. To be able to use Rapture, apply a large amount of shields, and then use one Power Gradients charge is extremely helpful for more of a mini ramp when you're not able to have as great of a duration of atonements but still want to be able to put out that burst. So discipline will go from its large ramp of an evangelism into downtime with a couple of atonements put out, continuing to smite and use solace on cooldown, and maintaining shadow or pain. Powered Radiance Charges can be used for more of these mini ramp ups, or if there's an unexpected burst of damage onto the group, you can quickly use a charge or two to be able to top those players off. Generally, you do not want to be using lots of Shadow Mend or Powered Shield if you do not have, for example, Rapture up, if you're not ramping up, for example, and if you're just trying to react to the damage, right? If there's small bits of damage going out, your other healers on your team are looking to be able to heal them quickly, and your focus is going to be on ramping up for very specific moments in the encounter. Looking at where those damage patterns are and working to maximize them with the rest of your group is absolutely key into mastering the Discipline Room spec. This one is an incredibly engaging and very fun spec to be able to play, but in many cases it does require a certain discipline in your own gameplay to be able to master. While it's very fun, you also have to make sure you're not getting ahead of yourself and burning mana inefficiently by applying too many atonements or not fully preparing your ramp ups properly. Going into Dizarre Lore, the spec will be able to bring a considerable amount of utility and on top of the damage and healing that it provides as well. Finding good timings for your power barrier or pain suppression usage will be absolutely key to mastering the spec. If you have any questions, 
feel free to hit me up in my live stream, link in the description below, or on Discord as well. For all the most up-to-date information on Azerite gear, trinkets, etc., or any other changes that might happen in the future, be sure to check them out in my written guides on Wowhead, linked in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you all found this helpful and useful. Let me know what you guys think. We're back again to making YouTube videos, and much love to my editor, Preheat, for dealing with me on this hiatus. Thank you, guys, and I'll catch you all next time.